received an article from uh, Pedro <clears throat> from Portugal, one of my subscribers on this channel here, and uh, it was uh, an article written by a gentleman, and basically he's saying that you should follow Warren Buffett's lead and wait for the bar bottom of the market. He basically is saying that um, Warren has indicated that these things, when, when the market is so divided and a small group of stocks is supporting the, the market, it never ends well. Well, I did an art or a, a video about that. Um, let's see, it was back on February the 21st, uh, and it was entitled The Coming Retirement Crisis, in which I shared with you that Warren had $128 billion in cash. Now, on February 21st, Warren had no idea that there was a, um, a, cor a pandemic coming our way. In fact, uh, what he alluded to and, uh, was that there was so much debt out there in corporations that if anything happened, that was um, show, slowed down their cash flow, that they would be in trouble. Well, in fact, that's exactly what happened. And Warren go, went on to explain to us at his annual meeting that he dumped all his airline stock uh, because they um, were short of cash. And in essence, what he said was because they didn't have a good operating business plan. And I, and I compare this to uh, a gentleman I happen to know who uh, lives in a $1.8 million house, which here in Birmingham that equates to about 13,000 square feet on a lake uh, with a pool and uh, a full kitchen on the main floor and a full kitchen downstairs and a TV theater and, and anything and everything that you could want in a home. Um, he drives uh, a Mercedes, his wife drives a Mercedes, and he has a Lamborghini in the, the lower garage. But right now, he's trying to sell that Lamborghini. He owns um, three white tablecloth restaurants, and uh, he owns two hotels. Well, his business was built on cash flow. His lifestyle was built on cash flow. And the banks saw the cash flow from his restaurants and his hotels and said, hey, he's, he's good for the money. But right now, he's not good for the money. He can't make his payments, so he's trying to sell his Lamborghini. Well, that's exactly what has happened uh, to the airlines. That has happened to the movie theaters. It's happened to the, the hotel business, to the restaurant business. These people were running businesses that were only good in good times. They borrowed money to support their lifestyle and their businesses based on the cash flow that they had. And they didn't save and put aside any money for bad times. And folks, we're in bad times. Now, on the other hand, there are some companies who, by virtue of the nature of their business, that they're built around the Internet and technology, and they don't have a lot of financial structure, that is a hotel or a restaurant, or, and maybe they live within their means, and they in the past have been in the position to accumulate a lot of cash and even buy their stock back as the price of their stock was going back to again increase the holdings that they have so that when bad times come, they can scale back and they can survive. And that's what's basically happened. We have two separate economies. Now, the, the other thing that's happening that I've been preaching about is that we have a convergence of, of technologies that are coming together that if we hadn't had the, the coronavirus, the only thing they would have needed to change the way we live was cash. That's all they would have needed is more influx of capital, which would have come through more borrowing, and, and, but it didn't happen that way. 
we have a virus. So we have the big six that I have referred to, part of the big nine, void China, uh, that, are, that are doing quite well. In fact, their prices are almost up to the highs, in some cases beyond the highs, of pre-pandemic. So at this point, Warren makes the statement, I'm not buying anything. And he declares that he has now $137 billion, up from $128 billion, uh, even though his portfolio is down $50 billion work those numbers out, he's scared. He's not willing to get into the market at this time. You also need to remember that a number of years ago, Warren says, I only buy companies that I understand what they're doing. And that was a statement he made to Bill Gates when he said, I don't actually understand what your company Microsoft does, Bill, so I'm not buying it. Well, Bill explained to him what, what they do, and he did end up buying it. So although I totally respect uh, Warren Buffett, uh, he's 10 years older than me. He, he, he has proven himself to be very knowledgeable. I think maybe we've moved beyond his area of understanding. We have happening a convergence of technologies that are going to change the way that we live. Now, that is the number one criteria by which I buy stocks. Show me a stock that is going to change the way I live, then convince me they have a good business plan, that they can be profitable and make money and then sustain the, the, the ability to make money in both good and bad times, and I'm an investor. I'm someone who wants to be a part of that. No, I don't. I'm not an investor. I want to be an owner. I want to own part of that company, and that's why I stay, for the most part, within the big six, unless I see an opportunity on the short term, like I have with some of the gasoline stocks, to get in because I know that I will not always be able to pay $1.47 for a, for a gallon of gasoline. But I also know that those gasoline companies in 10 years are not going to have any business because we're going to go to electrical automobiles. So that being said, I want to invest in companies that are going to change the way I live. So going forward, I want to ask the question, how are you going to make sure that this never happens again? And I'm speaking of the pandemic. How are you going to make sure? And I know, and you know, if you watch TV or you read the Wall Street Journal, the technology is here. It is being used in South Korea and it is being used in China. And they are making the best of 5G, smartphones, um, quantum computing, artificial intelligence to basically put their, their population in the position that they can carry their phone around and prove that they do not have a communicable disease. We have that technology. Now the question is, are we going to implement it? Are we going to make it available to me and you so that we can feel comfortable with each other and not have to go into restaurants that are only allowed to have 25% occupancy, which means either I got to pay uh, four times the amount that I was for the, the meal or they're going out of business or the government has to subsidize them. And that is a consideration at that time, which I think is, is, is not viable. So the question then becomes, which do I value most? My, my privacy or my life? And the choice will be mine. Eventually, I think the, 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 the do-gooders and those who, 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 who just will protest anything are going to have to make the decision. Am I willing to give up my life or am I willing to give up my privacy? I know which way I'm going to vote. So going forward, I'm, unlike Warren, I believe we are at the birth of a new growth in our stock market in the right stocks. Again, I want to repeat, there are two stock markets right now. Those who are attuned 
to the technology revolution that we're going to step into and those who are part of the past. Those are, are the part of the old stock market. And if I see the stock market moving forward in three phases, I can't put a timeline on the three phases, but there are three phases. Phase one is the conversions of technology, and that is 5G, artificial intelligence, big data, quantum computing, smartphones, and smart homes. This is what's going to answer the question or the demand on my part is prove to me that this pandemic situation can never happen again. And I think phase one will take care of that. Phase two, once we're past the pandemic question, is when we will implement 3D printing, autonomous automobiles, robotics, the full Internet of Things, and the electric automobile. This will be phase two, and that will change the way I live. Again, phase three will be a move towards renewable energy, and I'm speaking of wind and electric, um, virtual reality and augmented reality, smart cities, remote medical care, and that's my smart bathroom, and a clean environment. That's what's going to happen with this convergence of technology. Now, it would take a long time, maybe 10 years, for all that to happen under normal circumstances. But we have an urgency entering into that situation, and that is this pandemic. And trust me, this pandemic will go away and we will get a vaccine, but the deep question will be, how are you going to make sure this never happens again? And that's what's going to speed this up. The other element that's in there is the money to make it happen. We have put somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five trillion dollars into our economy in the last 60 days. Making a comparison, that is equivalent to what we put into the economy in 2008 and 2009, in two years. We then followed that up with another seven trillion over the period to 2018. Took our national debt from eight trillion to 18 trillion. We're now somewhere around 25 trillion. And now we're talking about a second wave of relief programs that are basically going to send us more checks. This money has to end up somewhere. You're going to receive it, and you're going to buy food, and you're going to pay your rent, and you're going to pay your electric and your, and your gas bills, and maybe you're going to make your car payment, but it's going to then trickle down somewhere. We have thus far, in 60 days, increased the money supply in the United States by roughly 20%. That's happening around the world. That money has to end up somewhere. It isn't going to be paid back in 60 days, so it's going to end up somewhere. I want you to go and get a chart of the S&P 500 and, and the Dow Jones and look at the, the chart of those two indices from 08 to 18 or to 20, and you're going to see that they just, and then lay over that a chart of our national debt. And you're going to see they line right up. Our national debt it funded the growth of the S&P 500, funded the growth of the Dow Jones. I don't think that's going to happen again. I think that you are going to see, if you go five years in the, in, in forward, in 2025, and you look at a chart of our national debt, and you lay the S&P and the NASDAQ on it, and uh, let's just say the NASDAQ, you're going to see it, it just funded it. You're then going to look at the Dow, and it's going to be down here. That's the old market. That's, that's the airlines, the hotels, the restaurants, that's the, pe the, the, the automobile companies. That's the people who live in the big 
$2 million house, drive two Mercedes and a Lamborghini in the basement. That's, that's the old market. The NASDAQ market is going to explode. The big six is going to explode. Read this book. Read this book. The future faster than you think. If, if you'll read just these two books, you'll understand what's going to happen in the stock market and you'll be able to make investments accordingly. They're in the description and there is a link to them. If you like this kind of video, if this helps you, subscribe. And please, share it with anybody that you care about. Because I believe, I don't think, I cannot find anybody else who is talking about this. Yeah, they're showing charts about the Fed, and they're talking about unemployment, and, and, they're, and they're talking about the government programs. But the future lies within a handful of companies that are in a position, and once the bureaucracy steps aside and says, okay, we need your help, this thing's going to take off, and you need to be a part of it. So become a part of the best of us investors tribe, and let's share our knowledge with each other. I got another email that I want to share with you tomorrow.